Good afternoon. I'm really glad to have with me Mr. Josh Gallagher, Chief Operating Officer, APAC for Essence Mediacom. As we know, Essence Mediacom came into being in the end of January this year, and he's here to tell us about how things have been going on since then. Welcome, Josh. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's really exciting to be here in Cannes and, and to be talking to you today as well. Uh, Essence Mediacom has been pegged as the new age media agency committed to delivering marketing breakthroughs for brands. In today's era of constant change and innovation, how would you define a new age media agency? So I think as a new age media agency, I think what we need to do constantly is keep up with platforms. I think in the past, media agencies have been far away in their capability in terms of keeping up with consumers, but platforms are ever changing. So if our ability to keep up with the way that consumers are using platforms in terms of the services we offer, say for example, in India, people love YouTube shorts. How do we as an agency solve the problem of media and content working really closely together? How are we accountable for the results on those platforms that are ever changing in format, in the ways that people use them and at the speed that they change as well. So for us as a new age media agency, trying to bring all of those things together and be as close as possible to the, the changes in consumer behavior is where we is where agency sh should be in the future. What's different from say an agency just five years ago? Well, I think the capability that you need to deliver on that is very different than five years ago. If I think about the majority of our agency five years ago, it was media planning and buying. And that's still a really big part of what we do. That's a core part of our business. But to be able to solve some of those problems that I spoke about before, you need expertise in content. You need platform expertise. You need people that understand consumer journey in a really detailed way. And you need analytics and insights that holds that all together and is accountable to business results for our clients. Now, two things that I take away from what you've just said, consumer centricity and omnichannel presence. Yes. We've also seen that, you know, consumers are always the first to evolve with brands and agency playing catch up. So yeah. what is the challenge in that front? Well, the challenge is to, to play catch up as quickly as possible. Um, the challenge is to predict in some sense what's going to happen next and to be able to be flexible enough as an agency in the type of people that we have and change the shape of our business ongoing to make sure that we can answer the, the questions our clients have and respond to the challenges that consumers give us from what they want out of advertising and media. Now, post the merger of Essence and Mediacom to form this combined entity, Essence Mediacom, how much of the essence of the merged entities have you retained? Well, we were really lucky and we had two great agencies. I think coming into the merger, we had two really strong agencies with distinct capability. So bringing them together was only a, a benefit. So while we're always trying to create new, there was sort of a huge amount of positive that sat within those, those two agencies, really unique cultures in terms of the way that they operated um, internally, but also with their clients that were complementary. Um, we've got Mediacom on one side, big CPG experience in, in markets like India, um, big platform experience, um, work really well with the IPL and big sporting platforms. And then you've got the digital nature of, of Essence, um, who lent heavily into data and analytics, are deeply involved in some of their clients, especially Google. Bringing those together was only a, a positive. So we've tried to keep all of the, the good things. And, and with our people, that's really important as well. Our people, are, everyone is nervous about change. So making sure that is, a, I suppose, a, a, an evolution, not just a total revolution of the agency is important, but we're using the best to create something new. So our message to our people is always to understand our client needs. Don't be afraid to create something new um, and be really positive in, in our intent. While we spoke about catch up, what I would also like to know is how do you ensure consistency across platforms? Well, I mean, we're really lucky in, in terms of we have a really consistent planning process that we use um, and approach to the way that we do work. We've got a consistent tool suite that we have, um, really advanced products in planning, but also in activation um, and measurement as well. So we have a really consistent spine um, and data platforms that help us understand um, how to be um, moving forward in the right direction but don't limit us too much in terms of our thinking. So there's consistency as a backbone, 
but we're making sure we're using that data, making sure we're using analytics and insights at the heart of everything that we do to inform the type of work that, that happens. Now coming to the client, what does a client in 2023 want and how are you future proof, Fred? How are you making yourself future ready? I think all clients just want growth. So the questions that they come at us in terms of the ways that they want to grow their business are more and more diverse than they used to be in the past. I think just spending more money or adding another distribution point are definitely ways to grow, but they're asking us for more than that because sometimes there's limitations. So the types of questions that we're asking are growth questions, and they can be really open-ended. So we need to find ways to be able to solve that. Sometimes that could be a new route to market. It could be a new distribution point. It could be about adding on another retail platform in e-commerce or finding another way to get our consumers to buy a product. In the future, we'll see people buying uh, products through NFT. Um, and that's another route to market that we'll need to investigate, maybe not now, but maybe in the next five to seven years. So there'll be ways that the marketers are going to need to change the way that they grow their business. Uh, and get advantage over their competitors. You mentioned spending money, but increasingly clients are demanding more for a buck. So in this case, uh, does it aggressive pricing with aggressive pricing and shrinking margins, does this impact quality deliverables? I don't think it impacts quality at all. There's always gonna be pressure on uh, efficiency. That's not gonna go away. But what it does is it puts pressure on us to be able to think differently on how we solve problems. And that's a really important part of, of what we do. So yes, there will be um, an interest from our clients in terms of getting the most out of their, their customers, which is us, but making sure that we can have different solutions, that we can change the shape of our business is really important as well. No one's paying us more necessarily for media services, and that's an agency-wide uh, phenomenon that's happening. But the types of services that we can provide that are really high value for our clients, things like analytics, things like advisory around data and technology services, areas where we can advise on how media and content can work really well together are proving to be really high value for our clients. And they're things that hoping that they think are high value and are, and are worth investing in a media agency. You mentioned solutions. So let's come to the proprietary tools that the agency offers. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And also what is the kind of investments that you're looking to build at uh, going along? So in terms of the tools we've got, we're really concentrated on end to end. And a lot of the tools that we have bringing them together are about understanding um, areas that used to be siloed before. So say, for example, our tools now help us with understanding how brand and performance media work really well together. So we've had individual tools in the past, but being able to bring those together with a data platform is where we're starting to see the ability to answer those questions better for our clients. We're not siloing off KPIs, we're not siloing off measurement approaches or siloing off the way that you can grow, but bringing those all together. I think where we'll see investment in our tools and we've been investing in the last few years, but moving forward is how we understand the impact of creative. We've got great media tools, great media optimization tools, layer on top of that, how we understand the effectiveness of a piece of creative and the impact that that can have in media performance or brand performance is where we're starting to invest a lot more. Effectiveness is, uh, seems to be the buzzword now, but how do you actually measure effectiveness? Well, so we work with our clients on bigger impact goals. Yeah. So it's not necessarily just a media KPI. We might be measuring brand KPIs that they have and, okay. and, and the importance of that for growth. For, for our clients. So when we start to look at multi KPI um, type of work, that's when we can start to see more effectiveness in, in the type of work that we do. I believe you were recently in India and you did share a media 2030 PowerPoint presentations with your clients. So what are the key industry trends you're seeing globally and are there any trends specific to India? Well, I think the things that we're starting to talk about now will show up in 2030. There's some things that don't have the scale now, but the technology might be there where we will see them, uh, where we'll see them coming to the fore in, in seven years time. I used the example in those presentations that maybe seven years ago or more, we were talking a lot about QR codes. Okay. They didn't have the scale. Now, for a lot of reasons, 
payment, but also COVID and, and the habit that that created around checking into places means that QR codes are now at, at scale. So I think that there's some really big things that we're doing now that maybe we're talking about, but we'll see them eventuate in the next seven years. I was, I was going to say for India, um, I've seen it, the last time I was in India, which was about four years ago before my recent trip, I spoke a lot about voice and voice search. And at the time, a lot of people looked at me like that is never going to be something that is going to scale. I think in India specifically, because of the nature of people in the market, um, the use of technology, voice search did scale over those past four years. For me, when I start to think about how we predict the future, it's about the convergence of technology. I actually see generative AI having a bigger impact on voice search because it's a natural search language. That will be the bigger impact that generative AI has will actually be on voice search and not necessarily on the way that we type into a search engine or type into, into a, a computer mainframe. But uh, generative AI and ChatGPT have been, you know, have uh, has been the top points. Is there anything else other than this that you're looking at and which could be big? Well, I, th I think there's other things, as I said before, that are, are smaller now that will start to start to scale. Um, I think the use of, there's things that we do now that we don't take advantage of. I mean, everyone's using biometric data to get into their phone. We haven't harnessed the use of that bi biometric data, whether that's fingerprints or whether that's scanning your, your, your face or your eyes to get into your phone. But if we're able to use that in a really responsible way, we're not going to use people's individual data and individual biometric data in that way. But being able to understand how people are using devices, um, the type of um, technology that sits behind that, I think in seven years' time will be really important for us. It'll allow people to more easily pay for things, to shop at home. That will change the way that shopping works in, in the next seven years. So for me, that's where there's really interesting changes that will happen. Interesting you mentioned shopping because we have seen in India a significant transformation when it comes to shopping because of UPI, mm -hmm. right? We've really seen a significant change. So I'm really curious how this will evolve. But moving on, uh, what are your key focus areas for India as a market? Well, I think for us as a market and in India as a market, I think it's a really interesting market from us. We've got great people and great talent within the market. The thing for me with India, and I was there a few weeks ago, is I'm really surprised not only by the great work that we do for global clients, but the rise of local clients as well. So I think that's a big opportunity for us. There's some great big local clients in India that we need to take advantage of the way that we work with them. And we can use cross-market learnings and some of our global learnings to be able to do that. Can you elaborate on any of these learnings that you say? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, well, I mean, I, I think there's, there's learnings from big global clients like Coca-Cola, for example, and the way that they treat culture. Um, so being able to take that um, into a local client um, and some of the structures that they put around understanding culture, um, and that culture could be a sporting culture and entertainment culture, applying that to another client, I think is a really interesting um, approach. We're seeing Coca-Cola globally taking steps into generative AI, using that to use in creative um, and also in, within their product. Taking those learnings into local markets like India could be really a big advantage for some of the local players. What are the growth that you're foreseeing for India? Well, I mean, I think it's it's a, a huge consumer market um, that's really tapped into mobile phone. I'm not going to predict a, a, a growth rate over the next few years, but we're already seeing the scale um, of that market coming coming to the fore. I think it is it already is one of the, the big kind of powerhouses within the region. It's really important for us. And I think the weight of the work um, in terms of the creative work that's, that's here this week um, is really important as well. Let's say single digit, high single digit, double digit, high <laughs> double digit. Where ballpark? Where do you see? I mean, I'm hoping high double digit. I mean, it's a, it, it is a really big growth market. As I said, there's big local clients in in the, in the market as well, which and they're really growing. And for me, that's a really big boom. Um, you've got great distribution, really good e-commerce platforms that are also entertainment platforms like a Flipkart. But that, for me, shows big growth in the market and big potential in the market. 
Finally, you mentioned work. So any standout work from the region that you're really proud of? Well, I think everyone after Can is going to talk about Whisper um, and the work from, from PNG. I think there's also been some great work we saw at GoFest, some great work from Airtel, for example. So I think there's there's great work coming out of out of India. I think a little bit less so this year than than last year um, in in Can, um, but I think India will come back with with a vengeance in the future because there's always great work born out of really interesting local insight um, and the scale to back it up. Thank you so much, Josh, for your time. It was real, it was a pleasure and a really enriching conversation with Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.